Hello, I'm back. I'm sorry I have been away for a while. I was actually on a western road trip. Drove all the way across the country with all sorts of stuff, delivering pe for people, friends. Uh, saw a lot of friends. Went all the way to California and back. Anyway, I'm back after, what, four weeks? I don't know. Well, I figured I'd make, better make a video. So I went into the big pile of tubes and went hunting for something, a subject for a video. And I found this. QK329, serial number 188. What is it? I don't know. Think about Raytheon QK numbers. You just never know what it's going to be. Um, a lot of radar tubes, klystrons, magnetrons, but there were all sorts of other strange things. The QK prefix was basically a catch-all for all sorts of special tubes and odd tubes and prototype tubes and things like that. Uh, the CK prefix is far more common. Uh, it was in use uh, in the 30s, but also through the 40s, 50s, 60s, probably all the way to the end. And that was the more interesting but commercial stuff. So what is this thing? I don't know. QK329? Never heard of it. Well, it turns out it's interesting. Probably not the original box. Oh, what is this thing? This. Let's bring it up close. This. UK 329, serial number 188. Look at that weird thing. This is a computer tube. Analog computers. This thing was designed in the early 50s, maybe produced probably mid-50s. I don't have a whole lot of information on this. Not much on the internet. Did a little hunting around. And it is called a square law tube. Very odd structure. The idea behind this is this will do a mathematical function on an input voltage. In this case, it's the squaring function. So, essentially, if you want to compute a couple of numbers, or, or if you want to, uh, rather, uh, square a number, that is, you know, number times itself, you could use something like this. Now, yeah, you could do it the more traditional way with a you know few op amps and things like that made out of triodes and stuff but here Raytheon made this this oddball to do it for you let's get it in the center there how does it work well I did a little looking on the internet and apparently it's hard to see in fact you really can't see what's going on in, in inside at all but if you can kind of see, there's a disc of metal underneath the mica disc. It's on both sides. The heater is in the center. What these flat discs, almost like a, a couple of pancakes, those squeeze the electron beam from the inner, uh, inner cathode there into sort of like well, a pancake of electrons. They spread out from the center. Now along the rim behind the plate, this is kind of the plate, I guess you'd call it, are, is mm, a grid, I don't know what you would call it, is another electrode, and it has punched out shapes. In fact, in this case, they're all parabolas. Parabolic sections, basically. What this all means is, as you put a voltage on those two pancakes, the input electrodes, and, and that, that electron beam gets squeezed, it gets squeezed, a certain amount of that goes through the little openings. Unfortunately, you really can't see the openings, and I'm not, I'm not going to bust the tube open. This is, this is too neat and too rare. This is going into the collection. What happens is the amount of squeeze that those two pancakes do or perform on the electron beam passing through the cutouts, well, it basically, it, it squares the voltage. You read out the, the, the uh, you, you read it out and, uh, well, hey, 
You've, you've, just, you've just computed a square. Really neat. Never seen one before. Looks like it uses the CRT base. But wait, it gets better. I found two of them. <laughs> My first thought was, oh, this is serial number 105. My first thought is, hey, wow, I can put one on eBay. Because, hey, everyone needs a squaring tube, don't they? Get you out of the way, get you out of the way. Oh, wait, hold on. Look at this. It's an earlier type. Also, very different construction. It looks like it's the same basic idea. But this earlier one, and not by much, look at that. 105, 188. I doubt they made a whole lot of these tubes. For some reason, they decided to go with this weird vertical thing. American tubes generally don't use vertical construction. Most American tubes are horizontal like this. In looking at it, it does kind of look like this might have been easier to make. Fewer parts. Because this looks like it's got a lot more going on. But wow. Wow. If you look on the net, internet, for pictures of the, CK, or the QK329, you see this version. Sometimes they have a nice nice uh, blue and red Rathian sticker on them, or decal. I guess they didn't get that fancy with these early ones yet. But they all look like this. This one's interesting. The uh, pictures of the extremely early ones, maybe the prototype, are this construction. So apparently uh, they started this way, ended this way. Probably electrically uh, compatible. The same number. I don't know what uh, what analog computers use these. I'd like to find out, but there's very little information on the net about these. Um, if anyone has a, a data sheet, I'd sure like to see it. Um, yeah, uh, send me a message on, 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 uh, on YouTube or whatever. I'd love to see it. It'd be neat to, to fire one of these things up. I don't know what kind of condition they're in. If they're new, used, I don't know. They're just as I found them. I hope I can find more. They're pretty cool. It'd be neat to throw together a little little dumb project to, well, square a couple of numbers. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to get back into the game here. Um, is try and get out a few more videos. Uh, maybe I'll do another one tonight. Who knows? I should go back digging into the pile of tubes. In any case, if you like this video, well, leave a like. Maybe even subscribe. Okay, see you later.